Jesus loves you more than life itself. He proved it by dying on the cross. Listen to what God has in store for you. Choose Jesus and life will be so much better. Thank you for tuning in to Walking in the Light with Zachary Bigley. As you listen to today's message, we believe God's Word will impact, empower, and change your life forever. Now, let's get ready to walk in the light. World Wide Web, my name is Zachary Bigley. You're watching Walking in the Light, and I thank you for tuning in. I want to talk to you today about open doors. I want to share with you uh, a brief message that I believe will encourage you, will help you to take the proper steps or believe God for uh, the supernatural, life-changing uh, pathways, doorways into the blessings that He has for you. So if you have your Bible, real quickly, turn over to Revelation chapter 3. I want to read this. I'll read it in the New King James Version. But verse 7 says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Verse 8, I know your works. See, I have set before you, put your own name there, I've set before you, I've set before Zachary Bigley, an open door, and no one can shut it. He goes on to say some more things, but I want to focus real quick on uh, Jesus speaking here. And he says, I have set before you an open door. God has set before you and I an open door. That door, if you look up the definition of the word open door, it means an opportunity of doing something good. It, it's used of the opportunity of doing something. And obviously, if it's with God, it's good. So uh, when he says, I've set before you an open door, you could say it like this. God or Jesus has set before you an opportunity to do something. In verse 7, he talks about that Jesus is the one with the key of David. And it says, he opens and no one shuts, and he shuts and no one opens. Now, I want to harp on something real quick, and I want to just briefly encourage you to realize that any opportunity you have to accomplish the plan of God for your life, the things that God's called you to do, it's all going to come through an open door that only Jesus can open. And let me encourage you with this little bit of, of hope. Every door that God has set before you that's been opened, guess what? If Jesus opens that door, no one, nobody can shut that door. I'm telling you, if Jesus Christ himself opens a door for you to do something, guess what? The president can't shut it. No king can shut it. No policeman can shut it. No preacher can shut it. No devil can shut it. No dog can shut it. Nobody can shut a door that Jesus opens. So I ask you to look within your heart, look within your prayer time, and ask God to show you what open door he's presented before you? What opportunity to do something has he presented before you? So we see here in Revelation 3, 7, verse 8, and if you read all the way down to chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus talks about an open door three times. Three times in that 15, 16 verses, Jesus talks about an open door. Now, I don't know about you, but if Jesus says it once, it's important. If he says it twice, we really should be paying attention. But if he's mentioning something three times within 16 verses, I would dare say he's really trying to get a point across. Amen? So God is opening a door. He's emphasizing this open door. And I want to just simply encourage you to look for your open door. What is it that God's called you to do? What's the dream? What's the vision that's in your heart? Well, it's going to take you going through an open door to accomplish that vision. Peter, he was on the water, walking, but it didn't come until after Jesus said, come, and Peter took that step of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never walked on water. I see that little lizard that they call it the Jesus Christ lizard. You can YouTube it, and it's a little lizard that walks across the water. I've seen that. Um, but I've never seen a human being literally walk on water. But here you have a story of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was walking on water and was literally walking to the point that he was going to cross the sea and go right on past the boat. But the disciples started freaking out. They thought it was a ghost. And 
Peter says, hey, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come on the water. And Jesus simply said, come. Well, Peter took a step of faith. Because it takes faith to walk on a substance that cannot hold you. Amen? So he took that step of faith. He walked through an open door. What was the open door that Peter walked through? It was Jesus' word that said, come. Jesus gave him the power to walk on water by the reign of the spoken word of God of come. So I ask you to, to look at the open door that's set before you. Look and see what door God has opened before you because there's a lost and dying world out there that needs to hear what you have to say, that needs what you have within you. There is a church body that needs the encouragement, the edification, the uh, help, the hope from one word that God would have you to speak to them. See, I can't reach everybody. You alone can't reach everybody. Every preacher in this world, if we try to do everything on our own, we could not reach everybody. That's why it takes you, it takes me, it takes him, it takes her, it takes all of us to do the job or do the work of Jesus. But you got to look for what God's opening before you. You can't necessarily do what I do. I can't necessarily do what you do. But you and I both can do what God's called us to do and be successful at it. So Jesus gave an open door and he's saying, look, if I open it, can't anybody shut it? Now I want you to notice in John chapter 4 verse 1, let me read this real quick. It says, uh, after these things, this is the Apostle John uh, writing and, and writing these things out. He says, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Now I want you to pay attention to Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. It says, after these things I looked. It wasn't until John began to look that he saw that open door standing before him. And once he saw that open door, then he heard the voice of God or the voice uh, that was thunderous saying, hey, come up here. So I want to challenge you to look for your open door. Once you've found that open door, I want you to begin to take the proper step of going through the door that God's given to you. And once you've walked through that door, guess what? There are greater things that God will reveal to you as you walk through that door. And then guess what? When you go through the next door that's before you, you have a choice to stand still or walk through this next door open door and let God show you more things. I heard a preacher, I believe his name was Robert Manu on, on TBN last night. And he gave this example of how he was at an airport in New York City. And he was kind of making light and, and playing uh, playing with a little bit, but he's talking about supernatural, how he went through uh, this door. He walked up to the door and he stood there. But as soon as he took this step, guess what? The door just opened wide. Well, he went into the restroom and uh, was washing his hands, and he was just kind of making a joke. And out of frustration, he started waving his hand, and guess what? Supernaturally, water started coming from the faucet. Well, he went to the paper towel dispenser, and there was no paper towel. So in a desperate attempt, he began flailing his hands, and guess what? Paper towels supernaturally appeared, and he got to dry his hands. Now, we know that's just technology, but the point is this. He made... Had he never took that first step, that door would have never opened. He would have still been in New York City, never have moved from where he went. But the moment he took that step, guess what happened? The door opened. So I want to encourage you today. What's God stirring in your heart? What vision, what blog is he asking you to write? What video is he asking you to make? What letter is he asking you to write? What Bible study is he asking you to start? What church and in what city is he asking you to go? I'm asking you to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if you see a door standing before you, walk through it. My God, because he'll show you things to come that you could not have thought, hoped, dreamed, or imagined. There are things that God wants to show you that can only be seen as you go through the door. When I stepped into, into ministry, Zachary Bigley Ministries, I didn't have a bunch of Zachary Bigley meetings, ministry meetings set up. I didn't have partners supporting the ministry monthly. I had $200 a month coming to my name, period. But I had a word from God. I had the peace of God, and I knew that I was to take this step of faith. And needless to say, it's been uh, over a year later, and guess what? 
doors are supernaturally opening. I'm going uh, over to the Caribbean next month. Um, God has just supernaturally embraced this walk of faith and opened supernatural doors. There's doors that God has opened for me that I had no idea were even there. But it all came back to I took a step of faith. And God is truly blessed. So what is it that God's called you to do? Are you going to stand there? Hope, wish, cry out to God in some desperate attempt to say, God, when are you going to move? Or are you going to take the step and begin to walk on water because God spoke a word to you, because God opened a door to you? So walk through the door. Henry Ward Beecher, an old preacher from back in the 1800s, made this statement. Every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of anxiety, or we can take hold of it with the handle of faith. Let me say that again. Every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of anxiety or the handle of faith. That's the actual quote from Henry Ward Beecher. Don't go, in through, don't go through life anxious, worrisome, fearful. Go through life in faith. Walk this walk of faith. Jesus is opening doors for you, whether it's a business opportunity, a preaching opportunity, a, a, a promotional opportunity. Whatever it may be, look for that open door. They're available. And I challenge you to start believing God for more open doors for your life. Start believing God for greater opportunities to do something. But please, do something. Amen? Look for the open door that Jesus has set before you. Look for it. Go through it. And I promise you, your future will be so much bigger and brighter than you could have ever thought, dreamed, or imagined. And you'll look back years later and say, man, so glad I went through that door. Jesus is awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in to Walking in the Light with yours truly, Zachary Bigley. I believe that God is doing awesome things in the body of Christ, and he's moving, he's shaking, but more importantly, he's opening doors for us to step out and do the moving and shaking by His grace, by His power, by His anointing, through His faith. So let God lead you. Listen, go, do, and be the blessing that you're called to be. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a great, great day. Thank you for tuning in to Walking in the Light with Zachary Bigley. We hope you are encouraged by today's message. Be sure to tune in next week. Same time, same station. For more information on Zachary Bigley Ministries, go to ZacharyBigley.org. That's ZacharyBigley.org. Remember, at Zachary Bigley Ministries, we are teaching the Word, reaching the nations.